Hi, this is Jason with MathTutorDVD.com, and today we're going to work this problem, which is uh, we have a function. It's a, sort of a complicated looking function. x times natural log of x over sine of natural log of x, and we want to find the derivative of this function. Uh, and so here you really have to use all of the tools that we've learned and how to take derivatives. You have a you have a, um, a fraction basically, so you have a numerator and you have a denominator. So you're going to be using the quotient rule of derivatives, but even as you start doing that, in the top you have two functions multiplied together, and in the bottom you have two nested functions. So you're really going to be using almost every every technique that we've talked about so far. The easiest way to proceed here is not to do things too quickly. Don't try to do every step at once. First, look at the big picture. The biggest picture that we have is that you have a fraction going on, so we need to use the quotient rule. And that is, if you look back at the uh, video lecture on, on this section, it's the bottom function times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. Now you just have to memorize that. When you use it enough, you do. So the derivative of this function is going to equal big picture bottom, which is sine of natural log of x times the derivative of the top. Now here's the thing where you can get into trouble. If you try to take this derivative now, you're going to get lost. So I always do it like this when it, when it gets to be complicated. I just put a little prime there. So it's bottom times the derivative of the numerator, derivative of the top, minus the top, and I'm going to go ahead and write that in brackets too, x times natural log of x, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom. So I've got sine of natural log of x and I'm going to take the derivative of that divided by the bottom squared. So you have sine of natural log of x uh, and we're going to for right now just write it inside of a bracket squared. Make sure you understand everything that I've done here because if you don't you're just not going to make it any farther. We have a quotient so we have to use the quotient rule. Um, we do bottom times the derivative of the top minus the top times the derivative of the bottom of the bottom squared. Now, most students, when they do a problem like this, start trying to take the derivative of, of this stuff as in the same step here. Because notice you have a, pro a, a product here, so you're going to have to break this up into a sort of a complicated expression also. But I can virtually guarantee you here in the beginning when you're learning calculus, if you try to do all of these things at once, this thing is going to give you the same problem. You have a sort of a complicated derivative here. If you start trying to do them all in one giant mega step, you're going to get lost and you're going to miss something. So keep it straight. Now when you go to the next step, you know that you just have to take the derivative of these little chunks and you'll be in good shape. So what we're going to do next is do that. So we're going to have on the top sine of natural log of x right and then inside of here we're going to have to break this out now you have a product so you have first term times the derivative of the second plus the second times the derivative of the first so it's going to be first term times the derivative of the second which is 1 over x derivative of natural log is 1 over x plus the second term natural log of x times the derivative of the first and that's just going to be 1 this natural log of x is going to be here multiplied by this 1. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and close the brackets just to keep it straight. Minus this next term, nothing happens to it, x times natural log of x. Now in this last bracket, we have the sine of the natural log of x. So you have a chain rule going on. The derivative of sine, because that's the outermost function, is cosine. So I'm going to have cosine of natural log of x and then I need to multiply by the derivative of the inside of this function. The derivative of natural log is 1 over x. So I close my bracket out and I'm, I'm done with the numerator. On the bottom, you draw a nice long line, uh, you just write it as sine squared of natural log of x. Usually you write it uh, with a square right there to um, in front of the sign or right by the sign there to show you that it's uh, it's multiplied there that it's uh, squared like that. So we, we've got basically a lot of progress made. Um, we've got the numerator all busted out and then we've got the denominator there. So let me kind of scoot down here just a little bit. Scoot like that so that we can see a little bit more. And what we need to do now is simplify what we have. 
So on the inside here, I want to get cute here, I could show you. What we're going to have is this x is really going to cancel with this 1 over x. And ultimately, because all of this stuff is multiplied together, this 1 over x is going to cancel with that x because those are multiplied together. So that's going to simplify things a lot. Let me go back and we'll continue on. So what we're going to have is the sine of the natural log of x multiplied by, this is going to be 1 plus natural log of x. And that, and then we're going to have a subtraction here. This x is going to go away, so we're going to have a natural log of x uh, times the um, cosine of natural log of x. And we're going to divide it all by sine squared natural log of x. Now I know that this is an ugly looking answer, but this is basically the answer. If you did this on your test and circled this as the answer, I would give you credit for it because you've demonstrated that you know how to do the quotient rule, you know how to do the chain rule, and you know how to do the product rule. And yeah, the answer is ugly, but that's just the way it is. Sometimes derivatives get ugly when you have a lot of nested functions like that. So what I want to do now is show you, if you were to take this guy, the original problem, and put it into a computer, like a program like Mathematica, it probably wouldn't give you, well, I can tell you, it doesn't give you this answer. And so you might think, well, um, get, do something wrong. So, but you're not really doing anything wrong. What I want to do, let me switch colors here to show you. Uh, this, th I mean, this is the answer. So I'm going to circle that right there. But you can continue simplifying this whole thing if you wanted to a little bit. Notice we have a sine natural log of x here, and we have a sine squared natural log of x uh, right here. And uh, notice that uh, up here we have a cosine natural log of x. So if I wanted to, I could sort of split this fraction up and write it like this. On the top, I would have sine of natural log of x times 1 plus natural log of x. And over here, I could write it as sine squared natural log of x. And I could subtract from it the second term, which will be um, cosine of natural log of x times natural log of x divided by sine squared natural log of x. And you'll see why I'm doing this here in a second. Uh, because ultimately, what I'm trying to do is um, this guy, I'm going to get a nice little cancellation. Because I'm going to get over here, I've got one of these signs that goes away. So I'm going to get 1 over sine natural log of x. And I can multiply this by what I have over here. I'm going to have 1 plus natural log of x minus. And you'll see why I'm doing this here in a second. Uh, out here in the front, I have this natural log of x going on here. And that's going to be multiplied by, I can write this as following, cosine of natural log of x divided by sine natural log of x. And I can multiply this by 1 over sine natural log of x. All right, now why did I do all this stuff? Because what is 1 over sine equal to? If you think back to your trig, 1 over sine is equal to the cosecant. So I can rewrite this if I wanted to as cosecant of natural log of x times 1 plus natural log of x, right, minus... And then I can write this guy as natural log of x times, this is going to be, cosine over sine is going to be a cotangent. It's going to be a cotangent. So I'm going to have here, make this term like this, I can have cotangent of natural log of x. And then this final term over here, 1 over sine again, is cosecant natural log of x. So Sometimes when you put these things in computers, you'll get answers that you didn't really expect, and this is one of those cases. So you can rewrite this, pulling out the cosecant. You can rewrite it as cosecant natural log of x, and then open yourself up a nice big square bracket, and on the inside, 1 plus natural log of x minus natural log of x times the cotangent of natural log of x. 
and this is what you would get out of some program like Mathematica. But when you when you put it in there and you hit evaluate the derivative and you get something like this, your first thought is, oh my goodness, this is nothing at all like what I got. Uh, I'm just really showing you in, in, green, in green here, that's why I switch colors, that you know you can beat an expression into a different form. So this is the kind of thing you would get out of a computer program like Mathematica, but up here on your test, if you just wanted to stop right here, that's perfectly fine. There are more things you could do here to get down to this other final answer, but my opinion, you know, that's that's pretty good. So I'm Jason with Math Tutor DVD. I hope you've enjoyed this uh, guy. The main thing you really need to do is when you're doing these long derivatives is you really have to take it slow up here in the first step. You really need to write these guys with a derivative placeholder so that you'll do those later. Um, if you if you try to do them all at once, you're just going to end up making a mistake. Practice your problems. Um, Check your work and you'll do better at these kinds of problems with a lot of practice.